Hello everyone. Hi there. Thanks for tuning in. This is gonna be a new album listening party presented to you by me, Dave Nutley. Dave Nutley by Dave. And uh, today we're gonna listen to the new Subway to Sally album Himmelfahrt. And I'm really looking forward to this. So, first of all though, sorry for being late because, you know, I just got, got back home basically. And um, yeah. Uh, things went a little bit different today, but not in a wet, bad way though, so don't worry. Um, I just had to, you know, reconfigure my day, so to speak, <laughs> a little bit. Which resulted in me being a little bit late to this, but just a few minutes, so I hope it's okay. Hi Tiffany, thanks for tuning in. In case you're still watching. Uh, let me arrange things real quick, like this right now. Okay, Coding Beast, hi! Thanks for tuning in. Glad you're here and you want to check out the album with me, by the way. Du bist ein bisschen spät. Yeah, I'm a little bit late, I, th I know. Uh, I'm, I'm really sorry about that, but I'm here now. Uh, couldn't be here earlier though, because uh, yeah, I was at my parents and uh, my mom texted me today and she said like, you know, uh, we want to have chili con carne today, um, which is really delicious. Don't you want to come over and eat with us? And, you know, of course, the son that I am, I, I didn't say no. I said yes. So uh, I just got home from that. was really delicious, by the way. So thanks, mom. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I don't want to talk too much um, either before we're gonna get started so one thing I have to do uh, sorry that I haven't been in the last few streams coding beast that is totally all right um, thanks for being here though of course I haven't forgotten about you so um, it's really really kind of you to say that of course uh, and to really care about the stuff that I'm making on YouTube so don't you worry at all I really appreciate you being here today though so that is really cool um, I still have to work a little bit with the camera settings I think because I'm looking really pale here but I'm not that pale um, so I don't know it's it's, it's really hard to really um, get a good color balance with this setup I feel sometimes it's a bit hard I don't know really have to um, yeah look into that a little bit further I think anyway that's not your concern um, so today as I said before, we're gonna listen to the new Subway to Sally album, Himmelfahrt. I haven't really listened to this album at all, so I haven't heard a single note of it. I saw that they released a single a couple of weeks ago, by the time of this recording and this live stream, um, which of course also will be available on my YouTube channel afterwards as a recording. Um, and I thought, you know what, mm, I could do a reaction to the single, and at first I wanted to do one, but then I didn't really have time. And um, then I said, you know what, I'm going to wait until the album comes out and I'm going to do an album listening party slash German language lesson because this is what this is, basically. It's going to be a mixture of a music reaction, an album reaction, and a little German lesson thrown in there, you know, merged together with all of that. So I'm going to translate all the song titles to English and I'm going to talk about what is interesting about them linguistically speaking. So you can also learn a few German words along the way. And um, there's only one thing left that I have to do. Uh, I do still watch your videos like Rammstein ones and uh, the other one as, ones as well. I really appreciate that coding beast. Thank you very much for doing that. That is uh, a great compliment uh, that you can give to any creator if you tell them you know you're you enjoy watching their videos and what they create, which that is really, really cool. So thumbs up to you and to everyone else for your support. I really, 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 really do appreciate that. I keep saying it, but I mean it every single time, believe me. Um, so uh, there's one more thing that I have to do before I'm gonna start. Uh, and then I'm gonna explain how this is gonna work. Uh, let's see, where is it though? Uh, give me a moment, please. Gonna be right back. So, live stream. There it is. 
Uh, Subway to Sally Himmelfahrt, right. Okay, so, everyone, let's talk about how this reaction is gonna work. Because it's a little bit special, you know. Uh, I just posted a comment into the chat, and I'm gonna pin it so that it remains, you know, on top. With all the album listening streaming links, you know, to Himmelfahrt by Subway to Sally. And the reason for that is... Oh, by the way, sorry, I, I guess I have to repost it because of the... Um, the uh, missing spaces in between names because otherwise the links may not work according to plan. I think this one... Yeah, that's better, I think. Okay, um, I would suggest you check out one of those links and we're gonna listen to the album simultaneously. However, you're not gonna hear the music in my stream because I don't wanna risk uh, it getting blocked or, you know, parts of it getting blocked. And sometimes it's a little bit tricky, even if the band allows for that or if their management allows for that. Sometimes still the YouTube system and algorithms really um, flag your stream or your video. And then, you know, in the worst case, I guess, uh, it would be blocked worldwide. And I don't want to risk that because, you know, I want to keep this up. Um, so the reason, that is the re reason why we're going to do it this way. So um, I'm going to count you in for each song. And then we're going to hit play simultaneously. And after each song, we're going to stop for a moment and I'm going to talk about the song. I'm going to translate the German title to English and I'm going to talk a little bit about the, um, well, linguistic specifications, if you will, of those song titles. And of course, once we've listened to all 12 tracks of, of the album, we're going to um, talk about the album. I'm going to give my first reaction, initial reaction review of the album, in a way. That is uh, the way we're going to do it. So I hope that's okay for you. Uh, as I said before, it's basically the only, way, the only way that I can really make sure that this will remain online. Um, and I don't want to risk things. I have done that in the past multiple times with multiple bands and reactions and I'm sick and tired of, you know, some things being blocked and not available to you guys and some things are available. That, that mishmash of things, I'm not a fan of that. So that's the reason we're going to do it this way. Shouldn't be too complicated though. Um, so I hope you're ready. As I've said before, uh, you can find all the streaming links to the album in the pinned comment. Whoops. And of course, also for you guys watching this afterwards, you can find those links in the video description down below. So without further ado, can't wait. Gonna switch my audio source real quick. Like that. Gonna. Yeah, I think that's that's about it. Okay, everyone. Let's go for it, I think. Um, and hope you're ready, because I sure am. Once more, blind reaction, first time reaction. Not to Subway to Sally as a band, but to this album. I haven't listened to any song off of this uh, yet. So, yeah, I'm really, really psyched about this. I really like the band a lot. So, um, and if you don't know the band yet, maybe this will be a good way to get to know them, you know, and their music. Because it is basically mostly German folk rock or folk metal or medieval influenced metal, you know. And that is an inter interesting mixture, I think. So, without further ado, everyone, let's begin with the first song, Was ihr wollt, by Subway to Sally on their new album, Himmelfahrt, in 3, 2, 1, play. I think this was a single, though, yeah. Acoustic guitar gets me every time. Nice. 
Nice chill beginning. Very infectious groove, really like that. Very groovy, you know, danceable. It's melodic, but it's not too in your face melodic, if that makes sense, which I really enjoy. Mm. Nice drum arrangement. Nice, nice breakdown. Okay, that was Was Ihr Wollt by Subway to Sally. The first track on the album, and not a surprise there, which isn't a bad thing though, even though it may sound as if it could be one. Um, I really, really like that they stay true to their style, which is basically, especially, you know, in terms of the last two, three, four-ish albums, a heavier style compared to their earlier works which relied more on acoustic guitars and pure folk mixed with a little bit of rock and metal here and there. So it has definitely shifted over the years, but I really, really appreciate that. You know, I, I like both eras of the band, basically. The, the early one, um, the more folk-driven one, and the latter one, which would be this. Um, and, you know, it's another good example of that, the more rock or metal-driven, guitar-driven sound. Very groovy still a great balance between um, acoustic guitars, acoustic influences, of course, you know, uh, medieval influences, uh, medieval instruments, folk instruments, you know, uh, die Drehleier, for instance, you know, uh, pipes, Julian pipes, I think, uh, to some degree as well. Um, yeah, bagpipes, of course. They have a lot of, you know, it's, I think it's, if I'm not mistaken, it's like seven, eight people in the band. And uh, basically all of them are multi-instrumentalists. They play multi, uh, many instruments. They're capable of doing that. And you 
notice that in the arrangements, you know, the creativity when it comes to those things. So I really, really, really do appreciate the creativity here. Um, yeah, so let's talk a little bit about the song's title, Was ihr wollt. I think from what I gathered, you know, from listening to the song at first, usually when I listen to a song for the first time, I'm not really paying attention too much uh, to the lyrics too much. I rather listen to the, uh, the song as a whole. Uh, however, I think um, it basically, it could be related to, you know, the artist and the audience, maybe in a way. Um, the the true um how should i put it the true um sign of admiration toward an artist uh, not necessarily is the money that you give them when you go to see them live for instance or to buy their merch of course also but it's the the physical appreciation the emotions that you show you know crying laughing which is also mentioned in the lyrics so Maybe it's some, about something like that. Would be an interesting topic, of course, especially considering, you know, current times with uh, the pandemic and everything and many bands and artists not having been able to really tour all that much in recent years. So, hmm. Anyway, the title, Was ihr wollt, could be translated to What you want. Um, for ihr being the second person plural, personal pronoun, what you people want, basically. So the you in the... English translation, what you want would be plural. Uh, was would be what. And wollt is the second person plural, nominative, indicative and active form of wollen. Wollen is the German term that means to want something. And of course, I'm going to post that into the chat for you guys, as always. And hi, Mr. Spock89. Mir geht's sehr gut. Vielen Dank. Ich kann jetzt leider nicht viel auf Deutsch sprechen, denn ich bin gerade in einer in der Album Reaction und möchte das nicht zu sehr rausreißen, aber äh, mir geht's gut. Ich hoffe, dir geht's auch gut und ich hoffe, du hast Spaß an diesem neuen Album. Little German thrown in there as well because Mr. Spock 89, which is a common thing in my streams asks how I'm doing and I'm supposed to say that in German, which of course I'm gladly doing. So, yeah, nice intro song. I hope you enjoyed this as well. Um Definitely typical Subway to Sally stuff. So let's continue with the second song, which is titled Leinen Los in 3, 2, 1, play. Once again, a typical folkish start. I really like, they have a sense for melody, but not melodies in, you know, that have been used a million times necessarily. Thank you, Tiffany. Nice. Wow. Nice energy. Chunky riffs. Love this already. Wow. I like the, the speed of this, the drive. Ooh. <laughs> Double bass. Awesome. Wow.
Also unpredictable elements here and there. Little twists and turns. That's awesome. Oh, bridge section coming in here. Always curious about those. Nice. Halftime breakdown, basically. Awesome. All right, that was Line and Los by Subway to Sally, the second song on the album, Himmelfahrt. What a banger this is. Wow, uh, great tempo, I think. You know, it's, it's not really like high up tempo, it's like higher mid tempo, but it's really, really driving. you really groovy. I really, really enjoyed this one as well. Um, Lyrically speaking, it could be about people, you know, that have gotten to a certain age uh, and, you know, in their, it would be in their natural instinct maybe to really slow down and really getting a little bit lazy as well. And, um, yeah, not really doing too much anymore, uh, but s there's still a spark in them that really likes, you know, that, that really makes them you know, get forward and still do things and s still want to experience things and explore things on the way, you know, in their lives. And I guess line and Los, you know, um, which would be, you know, um, set the ropes free, so to speak, or unbind them, um, you know, free yourself from binding, psychological bindings or expectations of others, you know, oh, you're old, you shouldn't be doing that anymore, something like that, maybe. Um, yeah, I, I guess it could be about that, you know, um, I really, really enjoy that metaphor, if it's like that. Um, it's definitely a motivational song, I think, so I really, really do appreciate. Stephen Keulemans, hi, thanks for tuning in. Uh, ein paar neue Subway to Sally Orwürmer dabei. Ich äh, bin mal sicher, ich ähm, habe noch nichts bisher von dem Album gehört, das ist jetzt mein, das, das erste Mal, dass ich das Album höre. Ähm, Aber bis jetzt gefällt es mir richtig gut. Schon die ersten beiden Songs, sehr vielversprechend. Um, I basically said that, you know, I've only listened to the first songs on the album, the first two ones, and it's really promising so far. I really, really appreciate this. What I also appreciate, especially in this song, is the, um, the well-thought-out drum arrangement. You know, there is double bass in this song, but not all the way through. And I really like that. It's really sparse and really only appears in certain... Um, places, you know, of the song, which makes those spots and sequences even hit harder, you know, in a good way. And I really, really like that. Once again, the sense of melody 
and melodies especially, I have to say it again, that are melodic, but they aren't really overused, I don't think. So I, I, I've always appreciated that about bands like Subway to Sally or In Extremo and others, you know, um, for using melodies that haven't been used in like millions of songs before. So that is really, really cool. So Leinen los. I've talked a little bit about that from a linguistic standpoint. Uh, it, you know, literally, literally translated would be Leinen or linen or leashes loose, you know, it could be uh, interpreted as a Nordic reference, um, like going to the going to sea, you know, and um, those things. I think from what I can tell by the song's titles, that is a recurring theme, at least, you know, visually speaking, maybe um, the the ocean, the sea, you know, and maybe exploring new territory on the sea, you know, uh, on a boat, for instance, or something that is related to that. Uh, but more about that later. Anyway, uh, it's die Leine, singular, die Leinen, plural, the linen, or here it could also be rope, the rope. Or, you know, in the context of pets and dogs, for instance, it could also be a leash, die Leine, the leash, you know. And yeah, the, the chorus basically functions as a command, you know. I command you to uh, break your boundaries, to set yourself free, to still achieve something in your life, even though you may be of an older age by now, you know. It's not too late. So um, that is really, really cool. Uh, Steven says, I have been away from the band for a while, but I feel like it sounds a lot harder than their old stuff, which I really appreciate. Yes. That is basically what I also said at the beginning of the stream. Um, I like both the older, like softer, more acoustic based stuff, but I really also like the newer stuff, which is harder, heavier, you know, more guitar driven, um, electric guitar driven, that is. Uh, I, I like both, but this, you know, it's heavy, but it's it's not too heavy either. Um, so it's, it's a nice, nice, well balanced uh, mixture. So, Linen Los would be Linen or Leashes Loose for, once again, the Leine, the Rope, the Linen, or, you know, in the context of uh, animals, for instance, the Leash. And, yeah, it, it basically, to some degree, serves as Das Kommando. Singular, die Kommandos, plural, the command. All right. Nice start into the album so far. Uh, I wonder what Weit ist das Meer could be about, which is the third track, which we're going to listen to in three, two, one, play. By the way, Stephen, if you want to listen along, uh, please use one of the links here in order to prevent copyright. Could be a ballad type of song, maybe? Nice vocal line there.
Und Background Vocals, love them. I love that vocal line there. The, at the end of the chorus, basically. Love this as well. That's a nice line. Da 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 da. Wow, lovely track. All right, that was Weit ist das Meer by Subway to Sally. And the ocean in the background. In the outro, the coda. And stop. Okay, that was like a, sort of like a half ballad, I guess you could name it. Um, Weit ist das Meer. A song full of longing, I feel. Sehnsucht, die Sehnsucht, the longing. Longing for the distance, you know, and what may be waiting for you there in the distance, something you don't know yet, but you want to find out and you, you know, make yourself ready for it. You travel there, but it's hard to reach it because it's so far away. You know, some things are f just far away to reach them both physically and, I guess, metaphorically speaking. So maybe about unfulfilled dreams in a way. Um, really cool. I really, really enjoyed the vocal melody in this one, especially in the chorus and the ending. Weit ist das Meer. You know, that that was really, really awesome. That was a really nice line and way to end that um, that section, so to speak. Really cool. Really cool. Uh, Steven says, oh yeah, love both for sure. I wish more of the Mittelalter rock bands would come to over to Belgium. It's slowly starting to change though. Last year I got to see In Extremo. Lucky you. Uh, great bands, by the way. Uh, I've seen them both live, both In Extremo and Subway to Sally. Both great, great bands. If you have a chance to see them live at some point, do it. Great live bands. Uh, also, I have to really mention uh, the singer Erik Fisch. He basically has sounded the same, and I mean that in the best way positive, you know, in the most positive way possible, basically. That's what I want to say. Um, he basically sounds the same since like almost 30 years. He has kept his voice very well refined in a way, uh, like a fine wine. It, it aged a little bit, yes, but it, it, it aged like fine wine, I think. Uh, it really sounds very distinct, very, very uh, typical and unique to him. Really recognizable. I think that is also one of the strengths of this band, Subway to Sally, the original sound in a way, and also the, um, especially vocal-wise, um, a really recognizable vocal quality and tonal quality of Eric Fisher's voice. Once, especially in those songs that may be a little bit softer here and there, I guess. But also in the heavier songs, in both, basically. So, really, really cool. Uh, okay. Let's talk about the lyrics real quick. Uh, the lyrics. The, um, the song title, of course. Because I haven't looked up the lyrics beforehand. I wanted to listen to this fresh uh, from the get-go. 
But I can tell you something about the title of the song, Weit ist das Meer, which would be translated to Wide is the Sea or Wide is the Ocean. Uh, for Weit being wide or broad, you know, broad, wide, the ocean is a wide thing, you know, it's n it seems to be endless. Um, so Weit and Wide are pretty similar in terms of, you know, their sound of course but um, maybe that's a good way to memorize things so it would be gonna post that into the chat of course weit is the ocean weit ist das Meer is a quite literal translation weit wide or broad and of course das Meer is well it's das Meer singular die Meere plural it's either the ocean or the sea both applies and we also have another term that is very similar to the English ocean, which would be der Ozean, singular, die Ozeane, plural, also meaning basically the same thing. So, yeah, you can use both, I guess. Um, I guess mehr is uh, the more common term when it comes to the sea, you know, when you want to refer to that in daily German, das Meer, maybe a little bit uh, more common. Anyway, awesome song once again. So let's dive deep with so tief. Spoiler alert regarding the translation, maybe. Uh, song number four. Let's listen to this one in drei, zwei, eins, play. And this one is a little bit longer, almost six minutes. Unexpected chord change there. Interesting track. Also rather reminiscent of the earlier work, similar to Weit ist das Meer, which also reminded me of the earlier stuff they put out. More acoustic based. Interesting scenery. And once again, Meer, he just mentioned that. Das Meer, the sea. Also really like the strings 
in this one. Nice touch. Wow. Okay. Woo. It's almost a little bit proggy. Ooh. <laughs> Nice rhythm. Nice low chord at the end. Cool song. And stop. Okay. That was Zotif by Subway to Sally. Uh, and a really well, you, I guess you could say a really literal explanation and description of what the scenery might be. Um, it talks about the Marianengraben and a girl, das Mädchen, basically drowning there, you know, going down. And like really deep, really low, so tief, so deep, so low, which basically is the English translation. Um, I had to look up what Marianengraben, which is basically the lowest point on Earth, as far as I'm concerned, near Japan, a uh, really, really deep point on the globe, uh, deep, deep sea level. Um, it's Mariana Trench, I think it should be in English. Um, der Marianengraben. Um, and the lyrical eye tries to save them from drowning as it seems they dive deep you know they follow them and they try to drag them up onto the surface onto you know um, the air basically to save their life so of course you could see that as a metaphor for things in life but you could also take it literally uh, I guess uh, which would also be fit the whole ocean sea metaphor we have heard on this album so far and we have seen mentioned so Really cool. Maybe a little bit proggy here and there, you know, especially in the middle with the heavier section, which really surprised me. Uh, didn't see that coming. Uh, maybe a song that you have to listen to like two, three times ish to really grasp everything. I feel, you know, especially in comparison to the previous three tracks, which were m maybe m were more accessible right away. Um, but maybe that's just me. I don't know. It's it's great though. Um, so yeah, uh, Stephen uh, asks, hast du eine Ahnung, wo Empor eigentlich etymologisch herkommt? Ich liebe das Wort einfach und glaube nicht, dass wir im Niederländischen bzw. Flämischen eine völlig äquivalente Übersetzung haben. Empor, uh, mm, he basically asks if I know where the German term Empor, uh, like, how should I, yeah, how to translate it literally, um, 
rising up basically, rising to a high level, empor steigen, uh, where that comes from, empor. I think there is die empore, uh, which was like a stand or like a high seat for like um, mm, maybe like an emperor of sorts. Um, uh, basically like a throne, I guess, back in the day, back in um, Greece and Italy, you know, Rome, the ancient Rome. I think die empore uh, maybe could, yeah, it could be related to that. I guess it could be originated it, it could originate from greek maybe uh, i could see fit or maybe latin um but i don't know um so uh yeah zotif short title but a really really uh, long song in comparison which i don't mind i like that so zotif could be translated to so deep or so low for teeth being deep or low it's an adjective. Uh, my tongue is uh, getting in the way sometimes. Uh, really, really interesting song. Okay, so the next one, track number five, isn't really like a a proper track. I guess you could say it's more like an interlude. It's uh, one minutes and thirty six seconds long. Gaudens in Domino, which basically is Latin. Speaking of which. <laughs> in a way, um, which means something like, um, you know, being happy about God or like being um, feeling happy in the presence of God, maybe, and knowing that God is in your life, that God is part of your life, uh, finding solace uh, and finding happiness in faith to some degree. Um, Freude am Herrn is the uh, German translation for that. But uh, yeah, let's listen to this. I don't know if it's, maybe it's going to be an instrumental. Uh, anyway, let's listen to Gaudens in Domino by Subway to Sally in 3, 2, 1, play. And this is very typical for Subway to Sally, by the way. Some interludes here and there. Oh, nice. Mm. Beautiful vocal arrangements. Getting goosebumps. Beautiful. Beautiful. And stop. That was Gaudens in Domino by Subway to Sally, as I said before, an interlude of sorts in Latin. And even though I was taught Latin back in school, I couldn't really tell you what the song is about from listening to the lyrics, uh, you know, right away. So, uh, <laughs> and I don't have the lyrics in front of me, you know, just saying. Um, anyway, yeah, um, I love when they do that. It's, it's a very typical thing for Subway to Sally, on most of their albums at least, to have at least one interlude in you know either gallic for instance or uh, mostly in latin though um, sometimes also in german um, it's it's a nice segue into another song for them and usually it's a very very well written and thought out vocal arrangement and that's the case here as well and i love that i'm a sucker for that 
I love great vocal harmonies and arrangements. You know, Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young, for instance, or someone like Stephen Wilson in Porcupine Tree. He does that as well, layering his own vocals um, in a certain really, yeah, cool way. So, <sighs> love it. Uh, Stephen says, I never wanted to take Latin because 12 year old me thought it was for nerds. <laughs> it would have been, uh, it would have helped me so much with German grammar at uni. Yes, uh, German, uh, I guess, similar to, um, yeah, other, most other languages actually in Europe, uh, with the exception of Finnish and Hungarian, especially, are Indo Germanic languages, which means they all s have the same origins in a way uh, lingu linguistically speaking uh, which also explains why there are many similarities between say uh, German especially low German and English or low German and Dutch for instance um, and the like and of course also Latin and German because it basically stems from Latin for the most part not all words of course especially like newer ones um, yeah, sometimes we have many loan words from English these days, of course, Anglicisms and everything. So um, you can't really generalize that, but it's it's really interesting. Anyway, I love those little interludes by Subway to Sally. Um, so it's happiness in or with the Lord. Freude am Herrn. For uh, basically der Herr is another term for the Lord, meaning the God. But you could also use it as, uh, you know, a form of address in a way. Der Herr, singular, die Herren, plural, which would be the Lord or the Mister, you know. Uh, but in this case also the God, which in other terms could also be referred to as der Gott, singular, die Götter, plural, the God, the Lord, you know. So both is possible. Um, yeah and it also fits very well here you know at this point in the album because it is the segue into the sixth song god spricht god speaks so let's check this one out in drei zwei eins play mm, this could be heavier maybe Ooh. Sounds quite evil. A little bit ghost-like. You know, the band Ghost, which I also love. I've reacted to their recent album, by the way, as well. This sounds like an intro melody to some sort of, like, video game, almost. Ooh. That's a really nasty guitar sound. Wow. Very direct lyrics this time around, I feel. Which I don't mind, though. Yes, yeah, Stephen. <laughs> That's a great line. Ihr beichtet mir Sünden, statt gut zu sein. You tell me your sins instead of being good, and not 
you know, committing sins at all in the first place. Good point, Stephen. Gonna talk about that after the song. This, like, slightly descending evil sound, you know, in terms of the tones, reminds me of Deutschland, the introduction to that music video. You know, if you know that. Quite similar. Ooh. A little bit sludgy. Maybe even a little bit Alice in Chains like. Mm. Nice interlude here. Nice ending there. Okay, and stop. That was God Spricht by Subway to Sally. And first and foremost, Stephen Kölemans, thank you very much. There it is. There it is. Uh, for having become a channel member on level one. That is greatly, greatly appreciated. Thank you very much for your support. And to all you guys, of course. Um, awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Really appreciate it. Uh, and also your input in in the chat right now, you know, uh, the, the interaction, which is why I love doing these album listening parties live and having live streams every now and then, because I like the the live interaction. And of course, Moritz Fischer, Namend, hi, wie geht's dir? Danke fürs Einschalten. Um, so, and you actually made a good point, Stephen. Um, it the vocals especially in this trick sort of had something you know of david raymond by uh, or like from the band disturbed a little bit here and there yeah eric fish has those i think it's sort of the same tone range that they have and that they share um i like both bands so i don't mind that in the slightest it's it's awesome um yeah, this song is really interesting because I think you could argue it's sort of like quite critical when it comes to how people refer to belief and faith in the sense of, you know, yeah, you know, I basically like I'm I'm paraphrasing now. Um it's okay to commit sins because of course I can also I can always tell God my sins, you know, I can reveal them to them. And by doing so, you know, uh, yeah, it's all fine again, you know. So it's basically okay to commit sins here and there. Um, and the lyrical I, being God in this uh, example, basically states that no, that's not how it works. That's, that's definitely not how it works. And you will never reach me, you will never get to me. You know, you're only a spark in the fire or in, the, in a short, you know, time frame on earth and I'm eternity ich bin die Ewigkeit really interesting perspective um, yeah um, I, I really enjoyed this one as well uh, and also the slightly not really dissonant slides that they have like in the in the beginning and in the end especially but sort of like slightly dissonant I'd say um, really enjoyed this one 
Uh, I'm a simple realo. <laughs> I see Subway to Sally. I click. That is much appreciated, Moritz. That's awesome. Okay, so God spricht translates to God speaks, which basically also um, works with what I just said. You know, um, God is the ly lyrical eye in this case, and they speak um, basically descending on top f toward down toward the people, the believers. Um, so I'm gonna post it into the chat real quick. God speaks, and of course, in this case, it's the third person singular, the nominative, indicative, active form of the verb sprechen, to speak. God spricht, er spricht, he speaks, or she speaks, or they, you know, it speaks, uh, depending on what you wanna uh, refer to them, um, you know, with what uh, pronoun, basically. It's always the third person singular, though, if you speak about a single God and in this linguistic context. Uh, Stephen says, definitely feels like shade at what we call Gelegenheitskatholiken in Belgium. There is a very similar German term, which I like that term, though. Um, people that only pay lip service to religion until they really need something for the, from the big man upstairs. That is basically what this is. In a nutshell, I guess. Um, I could be wrong, but I feel like the lyrics on this album so far are a little bit more direct, a little bit more immediate, like immediately accessible. They are not like really too ambiguous, I don't think. Which, of course, you know, you know, I, I like this as well. You know, I don't mind that at all. But I also like when they are a bit more cryptic when they are a bit more um poetic maybe in the phrasing and the choices of words um yeah but you know i also like this approach though i guess it would be gelegenheitschristen in german yeah gelegenheitskatholiken would be very similar though um that would be another um interesting compound word gelegenheitskatholiken that would be the German spelling, very similar to the one, uh, you know, in Belgium. Um, Moritz says, although there is a subway to study song about these sometimes Christians, Vater vom Kreuzfeuer, yes, right, right. Yes, it's it's quite similar um, in, 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 in terms of the topic, I think. Really cool. Um, anyway, Let's continue with song number seven, Auf dem Hügel, On the Hill. Huh. Let's check this out in drei, zwei, eins, play. And Moritz, if you want to join in, uh, feel free to use one of the links in the chat up there. Uh, I'm going to do it this way in order to prevent copyright problems. I hope you don't mind. But that way I can make sure that this will remain online. Very string heavy so far, this album, I feel. Mm. Das ist auch gut, Moritz. Ich höre es gerade zum ersten Mal tatsächlich. Once again, nice vocal lines.
like the tribal sound of the drums here. Ausgeschlafen sind. Nice. Love the mid tempo vibe of this one. Very folky. Beautiful, really beautiful. Hmm. And stop. Okay, that was Auf dem Hügel by Subway to Sally. And I gotta be honest with you, I'm not really sure what this one could be about. Um, Maybe sleep, the sleep that is mentioned here, alle schlafen auf dem Hügel, you know, all sleep on the hill. I guess sleep is meant in the sense of being dead, maybe, being buried there. I could be wrong, though. Um, I guess it could also relate to sort of like a religious metaphor, you know, the hill, standing upon the hill, being closer to God, maybe, and being closer to heaven, in a way. Um Hmm, definitely food for thought, which I always appreciate, of course. Uh, Moritz says, from Auf dem Hügel, thanks God it's not Silent Hill. Yeah, <laughs> the Silent Hill. Um, I have flashbacks of Requiem from MCMXCV or MCMXCV in German or Latin, basically. Um, yeah, uh, definitely harkens back to the earlier... Uh, Subway to Sally sound mm, increasingly here um, which I really also like I think so far like we're seven songs out of 12 in to this album it definitely has its heavy moments but at the same time I feel maybe I'm wrong but I feel it's a little and I don't mean that in a negative way don't get me wrong I feel like compared to the last like two albums it's a little bit softer, a little bit more, like the balance between the old style and the new style is, it's a little, it's a little bit more balanced on this one, I feel, so far, but maybe I'm, I'm wrong. Um, anyway, I do really, really enjoyed this one as well, one of my faves so far. Um, so let's talk about the title once more. Auf dem Hügel means on the hill implying being on top of the hill um, in a way. So it's the preposition auf, meaning on or on top in this case, you know, on top of even. Uh, and it's basically a preposition, die preposition singular, die preposition in plural, the preposition. And of course, the other more or like quite important term here is der Hügel, singular, die Hügel, plural, the hill, with the German umlaut ü, das ü, der Hügel, the hill. That's a nice sounding term. Wait until you get to nine 
and 10. I'm okay. You, you're making me very, very excited now. Moritz. Um, uh, I'm sorry, Steven. Uh, yeah. All righty. I don't know if the next one's going to be in German, though, because it's, it's called Autumn, uh, which is English for Der Herbst. More about that after the song, though. So let's listen to it. Song number eight, Autumn in drei, zwei, eins, play. Also a little bit longer again, over five minutes. Oh no, Stephen. <laughs> Oh, that's a little bit James Bond-ish, the beginning. Very James Bond-like. Mm. Is that an electric guitar? Sounds awesome, though. Oh, yeah. And I, it seems to be, I may be wrong, it seems to be an instrumental. Also reminds me a little bit of Apocalyptica, to be honest. An arrangement that they would have. Oh, it's an e-violin. I see. Thanks for telling me, Moritz. Much appreciated. This sounds awesome. This reminds me heavily of James Bond. The way that the, you know, that especially, that chord change. Could also be a movie soundtrack, easily. Beautiful, once again. Come before the storm, maybe. Also, like the rain effect in the background, a little bit more ambiance.
<laughs> Effortless. Wow. Really impressive. Wow. Okay. And stop. That was Autumn by Subway to Sally. An instrumental over five minutes long. Very brave in these days, I think, to put something like that on the album. Uh, really, really appreciate that, though. I like instrumentals. I like folk. I like, you know, this, I think of all of the subway to Sally tricks that I can come up with um, from the top of my head this may be the most apocalyptica sounding one I know that apocalyptica play cellos or like celli uh, and they don't play violins necessarily but um, it certainly has like an apocalyptica vibe like apocalyptica meets James Bond ish vibe a really cool mixture and a really really nice different touch to this album it's a very dynamic album so far which i do really like as well the, the pacing is is well done it's not like all fast songs all slow songs it's like balanced out and um well thought out i think so yeah wow <laughs> uh Simon Michael told in a podcast that Autumn was a way for Ellie to use her e-violin. So it's a solo for Ellie the fiddle, says Moritz Fischer. Uh, thanks for telling me and us all of that, because that is really cool information to get on uh, like a, you know, um, a video like this or a stream like this um, to give some context uh, in case you know more about this. Uh, so that is always appreciated. Thanks, Moritz. That is much appreciated. A really really cool song and uh, yeah once again uh, if you translated that to German it would be Herbst which is the the name of the season der Herbst singular die Herbste plural the autumn or fall and as I've said before it's a season autumn is a season so is der Herbst and the season is die Jahreszeit, singular. Die Jahreszeiten, plural. The season. The, the year time translated literally. Die Jahreszeit. Cool song. And it sort of has like an, like an autumn vibe to it as well. Now that, that I think about it, yeah. You know, something that I would listen to, uh, you know, when I'm going for a walk in... And, you know, it's it's basically dusk, you know, the sun is setting uh, in like on an autumn day uh, with all the colorful leaves everywhere. Um, yeah, 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 I could see that fit. And I wonder, I really wonder what the next song could sound like because it shares the name with another German band that you may we very well know of, Eisbrecher. It's called, um, and I don't think it's it. It most definitely doesn't have anything to do with the band, but um, there is another meaning to Eisbrecher, uh, which I know of at least. So let's talk about that after we've listened to the song. But before I'm gonna say what Moritz has to say. Meanwhile, I can give my opinion to the album compared to Midgift, and hey, it's more optimistic and hopeful, and it's a wonderful best of. Uh, like uh, of the 30 year history but for me there is a final spark that's missing to push my favorite album Schwarz and Schwarz from its throne yeah I'm, I'm gonna be talking about the album my first impression on this uh, of this album and a few more things uh, after we've listened to all the songs you know um, so there are five more to go so uh, four more to go sorry uh, so let's continue with Eisbrecher thanks for sharing that though Moritz um, Let's listen to Eisbrecher, song number nine, next. Uh, and let's begin in three, two, one, go. Well, it certainly sounds similar to the band Eisbrecher so far. 
chunky roofs. Quite industrial even. Oh. -ho -ho. The production of this is really impeccable. It's really, really cool. And the drum arrangement once again. Ice, 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 nice. <laughs> nice little touch. Mm. Nice. Nice melody. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Guitars. Okay, and stop. That was Eisbrecher by Subway to Sally, song number nine on the album. One of my favorites so far on the album, gotta say. Has a really nice flow to it. You know, very, very nice groove going on there. Uh, very hypnotic and, yeah, just, you know, grasping you or sucking you into the song, basically. Um, I think this would be a banger live. This would be a great live song, I feel. I hope they play it live. Um, and it really fits well with what uh, with what with what uh, Moritz basically said before the song started playing uh, that this album is more optimistic and hopeful 
because this song also resembles that kind of, especially in the chorus, you know, ice bricht, ice breaks, you're not trapped in there, your ship will break free. There is a chance, you know, don't lose hope, basically. Die Hoffnung. Um, so, yeah, it's a very hopeful metaphor and imagery here that is going on. Not not just in this song, but also, you know, in Sotif, someone that rescues you, you know, and from drowning in that case, uh, literally speaking, Leinen los, you know, don't rest, don't feel like you have to rest if there is still a spark in you, even uh, at an older age to pursue something new, do it, you know, which basically uh, is related to Leinen los, I think, song number two. Um, yeah, I, I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. Uh, Müssten da nicht noch die sechs Lieder von CD2, also die fünf Remixe und die Neuaufnahme von So Rot kommen? Eigentlich ja, aber ich höre eigentlich bei meinen äh, Album-Listening-Partys tatsächlich hauptsächlich das, das Hauptalbum an. Weil einfach nicht alle Leute vielleicht auch die Möglichkeit haben und weil nicht auf allen Streaming-Plattformen unbedingt auch alle Versionen immer verfügbar sind. Deswegen fokussiere ich mich da immer auf das Hauptalbum. Davon abgesehen bin ich ehrlich gesagt auch nicht so der größte Fan von Remixen. Ähm, Deswegen, also ich werde mich hier auf das normale Album äh, beschränken, wie immer, also zwölf Songs. Uh, Morris basically asked uh, if I'm also gonna be listening to the remixes, uh, the remixes uh, on the second disc, and uh, no, I'm not gonna do that. Uh, I'm gonna focus on the main album that is available everywhere, because sometimes on certain streaming providers, for instance, um, the other songs, these ones here, uh, may not be available. So, um, I'm just gonna focus on the main album uh, with these album listening parties. I hope you don't mind. But I'm gonna listen to the remix versions, uh, you know, in private, of course. But uh, yeah. Um, that being said, though, um, yeah, Eisbrecher, once again, referring uh, or resembling the band name, of course, which you may have heard of. But as a term and also fitting to the lyrics, uh, Germans re say Eisbrecher when they refer to a certain kind of ship. Das Schiff. A ship that is capable of breaking ice, you know. A ship uh, that basically has those abilities. A very stable, thick ship. Um, and of course you can also see it as a metaphor for things, you know. Breaking through something that holds you back. Everything, you know. Um, yeah. So... Eisbrecher translates to icebreaker. It's basically another compound word. Das Compositum. Singular. Die Composita. Plural. The compound word. Meaning a mixture of two or more words or syllables to one new word. They merge. Which is one of the most common things you will find in the German language when it comes to making up words, uh, expressing things. You know, just using compound words is very, very typical for German for the German language. Uh, and yeah, once again, translate literally, it's icebreaker um, for das Eis, the ice, which by the way, in German, we don't differentiate between ice and ice cream, the way you may do it in English. In German, we use it for both things. The ice you may find, you know, um, during winter on rooftops and everything hanging down ice pickles, you know, or um, not pickles, um, you know what I mean, ice, you know, uh, natural ice, that is. But we also may use ice as a term for uh, ice cream, edible ice, that is, you know, uh, the food, das ice, the ice, 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 baby. <laughs> and... Um, it's der Brecher, singular, die Brecher, plural, the breaker. And together it's der Eisbrecher. And once again, of course, a little German language learning hack for you guys. Uh, some of you might be aware of that already. When it comes to German compound words, and you may ask yourselves, okay, why? Well, how can I know the gender of a compound word in German? Well, it's in 
pretty much all cases, it's the latter part, like the last part of the compound word that determines the gender of the whole compound word. So in this case, it's das Eis, which is neuter, but it's der Brecher, masculine, der. And because Brecher is the last part and it's masculine, the whole compound word is masculine, der Eisbrecher. You're welcome. <laughs> the German language strikes again. So I'm gonna post that as well. Eisgurken. Wir sind wie Eisgurken. Although can although eyes can be eyes or the note E is which is F. Yes, that is that as well. Um great observation. That is true as well. Uh anyway, yeah, awesome song. Um let's continue with song number ten. Halt. Or as you say in English, halt, <laughs> which al always sounds interesting to German ears. Anyway, um, yeah, song number 10 in 3, 2, 1, play. Also longer one, almost six minutes. Berangeri, hi. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you're doing well. If you want to listen along, use one of the links in the chat up there or in the video description. Wow. Ooh. That's dark. Wow. <laughs> this is easily the heaviest song so far, I think. This is more indicative of the more recent Subway to Sally sound, I think, the heavier side. Sounds so nasty. Wow. <laughs> Is it like a like a drop D guitar of sorts, maybe? Drop D tuning? Like a lower tuning? 
because it sounds really maybe it's also seventh string guitar maybe or 12th string even Eddie's little stack hi if you want to listen along use one of the links pinned up there in the chat thanks for tuning in hope you're doing well Jake Ree, hi. Thank you very much for doing that. Much appreciated. And yes, I'm well. Hope you are too. I think there's there's gonna be a really heavy outro coming up. Maybe. Yeah. <sighs> nice, nice, nice. Very f medieval ultra though. Didn't expect that in this song. Okay, everyone. That was Halt by Subway to Sully and Stop. Easily easily the, the heaviest track on the album so far, I think. Uh, along with Eisbrecher uh, and uh, God Spricht, maybe. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Um, definitely standing out uh, because of that. And uh, once again, uh, hi Eddie's little stack and J Cree. I really appreciate you guys being here. Hope you're well. I am. Yes, uh, my finger is uh, well again. Sort of, you know, still healing a little bit. But um, I didn't know that band well the name because I heard you talking about it. But it sounds great. It is a great band. Um, they've been around since like almost thirty years now. Um, they mostly release German songs, uh, but they also have a few, especially in the early days, they uh, had a few English tracks and sometimes they also have a few Latin songs, like Little Interludes, for instance. Uh, but mostly it's German. And Erik Fisch, the singer, has a really awesome voice, I think. And it's basically folk rock or folk metal in a broader sense, you know, or like medieval, medieval based folk metal sort of really really interesting mixture like basically crossover or you could also call it progressive you know in a way it is um i love it i love it i I'm, i've been a big fan of the band since like 2007 i think with their album bastard uh, which is when i got to know them um and found out about them and i've been a fan ever since they have many many great songs uh, I've even made a video about Subway to Sally, I think like three, four, five-ish years ago, uh, in which I basically explain the band and where, where they come from, what is special about them. Um, so if you want to find out more about the band itself, feel free to check that video out on my channel. Uh, just type in, you know, definitely uh, Subway to Sally. I think you should find it then. Um, their English songs were such a different sound from today. That is true, Eddie. That is true. Um, but I like both. I like both, you know, the the older, more acoustic-based albums, and these newer, like heavier albums, and more guitar-driven albums. Both are great. Um, so yeah, so is Halt. I really enjoyed this song as well. Uh, definitely have to listen to it one or two times more in order to really get everything I feel. But uh, yeah, so Halt in German means multiple things depending on the context. Welcome to the German language. Um, in this context, you know, halt dich an mir fest, um, hold on to me, or like, 
um, stick to me, you know, I'm gonna be your savior, I'm gonna be your rescuer, I'm gonna protect you, I'm, I'm your protector basically, hold, you know, cling on to me. Uh, so it's basically der Halt in the sense of I'm your support, you know, I'm your physical support or mental support or both even. So you could also call it die Stütze, the support. Um, so, but in other contexts, you know, um, it's a very rich German word, as I mentioned, Halt. Uh, you could also use Halt in German as der Halt, singular, die Halte, plural, meaning stop, a stop. For instance, a stop, you know, uh, on a train uh, ride, you know, like a train station. Uh, that would be der Halt. But you could also use it as sort of a command or request. Halt! You know, stand still. Stop. Halt! Um, or you will hear that quite often in spoken German, especially in colloquial daily spoken German. Das ist halt so. Which is basically a conversational, a modal particle, if you will. Um, which basically is similar to saying just in English. For instance, in it's it's just like that, you know, deal with it. Es ist, das ist halt so. It's just like that, you know, it's just the way it is. You can't do anything about it, you know, just go with the flow. So it's a very, as I've said before, a very versatile, rich word, semantically speaking. Um, I love how they don't shy away from expressing, how shall I say, epic sentiments. Yes, yes, very well put, uh, I think. They definitely do that uh, very often. And yeah, I, I really enjoy it. I love everything about this band, to be honest. Um, when I really have to break it down, the vocal sound, you know, the, the singer, Eric Fisch's voice, very um, distinct, very recognizable. Uh, the, the also the production on this album I really enjoy. Um, quite crisp, dynamic, so powerful still. Uh, really balanced out in between, you know, the the typical rock band part and the 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 folk folk instruments, folk based parts. Um, yeah. Das ist halt so, definitely <laughs> entered my vocabulary once I started speaking German for my job. Yeah, <laughs> das ist halt so. You know, it's, it's, it's just, it's simply, it is simply like that. So it's halt in this context is just or simply, you know. It's simply like that. It's just like that. Das ist halt so. You know, doesn't have anything to do with this track here, but um, you could also use it that way. Anyway. Let's continue with the penultimate song, the second to last song, Ihr kriegt uns nie. Let's listen to this one in 3, 2, 1, play. I like the little squeaky riffs thrown in there. By the way, this tastes great. This reminds me of Besser Du Renst. It reminds me of Besser Du Renst, sort of. Same tempo.
Appreciate it, Stephen. Yeah, this is the Besser Durenz on this album, I feel. Nice lift there. <laughs> the guitar work. Wow. Awesome track. And stop. That was Ihr kriegt uns nie by Subway to Sally, the second to last song on the album. Um, little short quick banger <laughs> very reminiscent of Besser du Renst uh, on the album Kreuzfeuer uh, released in 2009 which I also really enjoy I really love that song this has basically the same tempo it has basically the same drive the same energy I love it um Ihr kriegt uns nie. You will never get us. You know, you will never catch us. Um, that is. And so you don't don't even try because you won't succeed in that anyway. You know, just don't. Don't pursue us, you know, pursue your own things, basically. Um, but also, yeah, I guess I don't know what it exactly could what it could be about exactly, but um the it's it's not a lyrical i it's a lyrical us in this case a lyrical we if you will it's multiple people speaking to the listener uh, ihr kriegt uns nie you will ne you guys multiple people once again ihr ihr kriegt uns nie you guys will never get us or get to us you know you will you will never catch up on us um not even in a thousand years um, you've never been there where we were before you um, so that is basically sort of like a loosely a loose translation of the chorus if you will um, anyway great great little track I'm sorry um, fun fact do ihr kriegt uns nie in the music video Sugar Ray is missing he had to do something else during the recordings of the video interesting and I didn't know this was a single though See, I, I, I haven't really listened to the to the singles beforehand. Um, lyrical we. <laughs> oh yeah, you know what I mean, <laughs> Stephen. You know what I mean. Uh, anyway, yeah, awesome track, and a great fit for a single, I think. Short, simple, but not in a bad way. Uh, I really, really do appreciate those songs as well. And once again. I've mentioned it throughout the album like a few times now, but the guitar work is so strong in the sense it's very creative because it's, you know, all the little, I don't know what you call them actually. I'm not a guitar player. Um, I know a little bit about music here and there, but uh, like this more squeaky sort of like uh, slides and riffs thrown in there which I think they started doing more on like their recent three, four albums compared to earlier stuff, um, which I really, it adds a nice flavor to the music that hasn't been there before, I think. And uh, like a heavier edge in a way. Um, there's an official video. That's what I was watching. Ah, 
That's preparation too. It's for the atmosphere. Yes. Uh, and they know how to create a great great atmosphere, I think, with like little intros or little bridge sections, uh, codas, you know, outros. Um, they have a, like a feeling for that. It, and, and I really, really appreciate that about bands and artists when they know how to do that. So let's see about the translation. So once again, ihr kriegt uns nie, you, meaning multiple use. <laughs> You guys will never get us, you people. Uh, for Krieg being the second person plural nominative, indicative, active of Kriegen, to get something or someone in this case. Uns is the first person plural reflexive pronoun, plural, us, uns. And it's nie, which is the short form of niemals. Never. You will never get us. Nie. Niemals. All right, everyone. One more to go. And it's Lasst die Himmel fallen. Let's listen to this one. Song number 12, the last one. In three, two, one, play. Maybe a ballad once again. So about a like an ad abduction and rape. Nice singing. Ooh, bittersweet. Getting goosebumps. Nice melody. <laughs> I love this chorus. Wow.
Wow. Whew. Wow. Very emotional track. And that was Himmelfahrt by Subway to Sally, everyone. And the last track, Last Die Himmelfallen. Beautiful song. Really touching and beautiful song. Um, you know, about the breakup of a relationship and someone else stealing your love, basically, away. Um, and you coping with that. And, um, yeah. Really deep song. Really, really touching. Great melody. Definitely one of the f my favorite choruses on the album, I think. And I love how sparse it is. It's very minimalistic. It's it really focuses on the the folkish acoustic side of things. Great way to end the album. Um, yeah, awesome, tr awesome track from front to back. Rhyme, rhyme. Uh, Moritz says, when I heard in a podcast that someone else than Ellie recorded the cello in Lasty Himmelfine, I just thought it's Bedeutung. And I was right. Uh, Moritz, by the way, if you have a link to the podcast, feel free to post it in the, to the chat because I love listening to podcasts. And by the way, talking about it, I also have a podcast. The German Podcast, a podcast in German in which I talk about different topics f ranging from uh, music to movies to video games to life in general, philosophical topics. Uh, there's a new topic in each episode. And if you like listening to podcasts, check it out. You can listen to it basically everywhere, like from Spotify to Apple Music to Amazon to Podbean to uh, many different apps. It's basically available everywhere. So... Uh, and it's much fun. I really enjoy making that. Uh, very smooth, right? <laughs> I agree. And by the way, uh, if you want to be like Steven, you know, become a channel member, maybe. Or another possibility, if you like words that begin with the letter P, consider joining my patreon you know because it really helps me making this all this possible spending the time making all this and also you know paying the bills simple as that it really really helps a lot uh, so thanks to everyone for supporting me uh, and this cause of course in this channel i really 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 appreciate um that and i'm forever grateful Simple as that. Anyway, uh, coming back to the song, uh, great song uh, once again, Last Die Himmelfallen. Very interesting um, titles. Only mods are allowed to put links in the chat. Is that so? Uh, I'm. Uh, 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 well, could you maybe post the link without the dots? Or something like that? Maybe that's possible. Um, that would be uh, a way to do it. Uh, anyway, uh, coming back to uh, the album um, as a whole, and first and foremost, the translation of the title of the last track, of course, uh, Lass die Himmel fallen, Let the Heavens Fall. Or let the heavens fall down. For der Himmel, singular, die Himmel, plural, the heaven in this case, or generally speaking, the sky. Right? Uh, in this case, it's, I guess, a more like poetic way of uh, referring to this. Fallen with the apostrophe is a very poetic phrasing, as an elliptic phrasing, basically. Usually it's fallen which is spelled the exact same way as the English fallen, which is not to be confused because even though they are somewhat related semantically, they don't mean exactly the same. Um, so fallen is the, the German infinite verb meaning to fall. 
and it's not fallen in the sense of the past participle uh, the way it is in English, you know. Um, so don't confuse those. And last, of course, is the second person uh, plural imperative form of lassen, to let or to do something. Last die Himmel fallen. I can say it's the Pot of Rock podcast. That that is a great way to um, to mention that, uh, Moritz. Thank you very much, of course, um, because as I've said before, I like listening to podcasts. Uh, Surais just subscribed. Welcome on board, Surais. Much appreciated, of course. Uh, okay, so um, my overall impression on the album. Um, this is from listening to it once, I have to say, you know. Um, but I really like this album. Front to back, there is not a single song that I don't like. There are f one or two tracks I feel that I have to listen to like two, three, four-ish times to really get everything. But even on first listen, they all sound great. and They all have something. They, are, they all are pretty unique in their own right. They all have... A reason to exist if that makes sense because they are unique even though it's definitely subway to sally through and through especially the more modern approach to their sound but it's also flavored increasingly with older like more quiet more acoustic driven subway to sally here and there lusty himmelfein um for instance or what else was it um Weit ist das Meer, I think. Um, yeah. But then again, you have like the really heavy songs like Eisbrecher and Halt, 9 and 10, um, which are really reminiscent of their more recent sound. So it's a nice mixture. And it's another really, really strong album by them. That's all I can say, basically. There's nothing that I really dislike about this. Uh, it's not too long, it's not too short, also, you know, once again, Gaudens in Domino, the little interlude with uh, the harmony vocals going on. I'm a sucker for that. I love it. Uh, and I'm glad they have one of those on here as well. Uh, very strong opening, I think, with Was ihr wollt, Leinen los und weit ist das Meer, especially those three f uh, first songs. Yeah, very, very strong. Uh, and Lasti Himmelfein, gotta be honest, also one of the most beautiful songs in recent Subway to Sally years, I think. Um, really beautiful, really touching, really emotional and emotive. So, but so many great songs. Auf dem Hügel, Ihr kriegt uns nie, more like mid upper, upper mid tempo bangers. Um, sort of reminding me of, you know, Bastard, the album, um, with songs like Voodoo, for instance same sort of energy going on there i really enjoy this really 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 enjoy this um and i hope you enjoyed this as well you know this little um yeah album listening party uh it was about time to do uh, a new one and uh, this was a perfect comeback for this sort of like video series on my channel which i'm gonna do every now and then uh so yeah, thanks to every one of you guys, to Moritz, to Steven, to Berangere, to J. Cree, to um, Eddie's little stack, to uh, who else was there and uh, wrote something in the chat? Uh, Tiffany, Coding Beast, Mr. Spock89. Um, you know, I really, really appreciate you guys being here, and all you guys watching this afterwards. I know you're there, and I do appreciate that. So thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. By the way, uh, one more thing before I'm going to go. I'm going to be live on Monday again because Monday is April the 3rd, which is my 8th channel anniversary on that day. I started this channel on May 3rd, uh, on May, on April the 3rd, 2015, and I'm going to be live for a little bit. I know it's a Monday. It's not like the weekend or anything, but that's the way it is. Um, I'm going to be live on Monday, uh, I think at like 8.30 p.m. CEST, Central European Summertime. 
so if you want to tune in, if you find the time, feel free to do that. Uh, it, yeah, it would be awesome, of course, but only if you can make it. Um, yeah, looking forward to that as well. This was awesome. I really like doing these album listening parties. I hope you appreciate them as well. I try to really find a good mixture of... Um, explaining or like reacting to German music in this case and also teaching a few German words and things about the German language on the fly and basically on the way you know along the way um, and I hope you like this mixture because honestly speaking I could be wrong but I haven't seen anyone else doing this type of stuff before on YouTube like this specific mixture not only doing an album reaction, but also explaining the the language or the linguistic properties of the titles, at least, you know, and sometimes even more. But since this was a blind reaction, I didn't look up the lyrics beforehand, and I can only and I only want to give my initial impression here. So, thanks once again, everyone. Have a nice day. And uh, I really appreciate you guys being here and your support. It really means the world. Thanks for watching and definitely see you next time. I'm your vlog Dave. No, I'm not. I'm definitely by now. I still have to get that out of my system. I'm definitely. I'm not vlog Dave anymore. <laughs> um, anyway, you know what I mean. I'm Dave. I'm definitely Dave. And Ratus Lavandula just subscribed. Welcome to the team. Uh, to you as well. Thanks for joining. Uh, see you next time around. Tschüss und bis zum nächsten Mal. Bye bye.